I've thought about the idea of this film almost every day I arrive at work. The thoughts come generally on one of my elevator rides. There are three of them each way. At least once per week, I'll be in an elevator and a stranger will ask me, How tall are you? Or, Do you play basketball? Or the one I heard last week, Are you seven feet tall? I'm not. My thought was this. I'm sick of strangers asking me that question. What are other people constantly asked? If I'm excited about being pregnant, if I'm having a boy or a girl, if I have any names picked out. Can I bum a cigarette? Or, hey, can I bar borrow a cigarette? Or I have this feeling that Semitic men with beards all look about the same. How tall are you? Now where are you from? Why I left the band. I got Palestinian friends with Hamas from here that I know. There's a carpet match of drapes, which is totally inappropriate. <laughs> and then I kick them in the nuts. A lot of strangers tend to ask me, Now where are you from? San Diego, California is my answer. No, no, no. Where, where are you from? La Jolla in San Diego? <laughs> and then they're like, no, well, what's your origin? And then I'll tell them that I'm Romanian. And shortly thereafter, there will be some sort of comment, something along the lines of, oh, yeah, my sister's um, neighbor's Armenian. And I'm like, that's great. As part of Urban Spoon, I've been asked a fair number of times by students for, for help on various student projects. And it's the worst, right? Because it's like, this is a student. Like, you know, it's not competitive. It's just totally, it would just be helpful. And you, 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 you. Obviously, you want to do that. Do you have a visceral reaction when you know somebody's going to ask you how tall? And if so, what is that visceral reaction? Um, I get a knot in the pit of my stomach because I can just see it coming. I know it's about to happen. And for a flash, I feel like I'm 12 years old in high school or in junior high once again and like the boys are picking on me because I'm about a foot taller than they are. Every time that someone asks about my history with Screaming Trees or Nirvana or whoever, um, they almost always ask why I left the band or why I quit and or if I regretted it and, and these are people who I have no history with. Um, to me that would be like me asking did you regret it when your wife uh, and you split up and you discovered that she was having an affair with someone who was a lot better looking than you and makes a lot more money, does that hurt? Asking someone why they quit a band um, can have just as many uh, personal connotations or uh, uh, it can be just as uh, uh, Devastating. Uh, the appearance of the person. If it's a hot girl, I'm way more likely to, you know, to, to answer the question uh, to the best of my ability. If it's uh, someone who I I have uh, no immediate uh, positive response to, and they're asking me personal questions, and I'm not in, in a good mood, I may say something very flip or. Um, you know, just tell them that I'm not interested in talking about it. Seems like pretty much everyone has a story for what strangers ask them to initiate conversation or fill dead air. This leads me to thoughts of some other pursuits that sometimes fill dead time or space for many of us. One obvious social networking website seems to captivate more downtime than any other current pursuit. Right, Facebook. I am a big Facebooker. I've pretty much narrowed it down to Facebook. For well, I frequent Facebook. Facebook? Facebook? Facebook. Facebook is definitely, I know everybody I'm friends with on Facebook. It's to communicate more personal things that are happening in my life and thoughts and images. I use Facebook for stalking. I use it for... Could you elaborate on the stalking? <laughs> I mean, I'm on Facebook daily. Event invitations. I actually get, I wouldn't say a lot of news, but at least some news from friends posting stuff up on Facebook that they think is interesting. I'm not looking for friends from my distant past anymore. That being said, if a friend from the distant past friend requested me, I probably would say yeah.
Twitter is my brand, and so I use that to share thoughts, it's thought leadership, and the people I follow on Twitter are people whose thoughts I'm interested in. I probably haven't met 90% of the people I know on Twitter. But actually, one network that I refuse to look at is YouTube. I have a number of films on YouTube, I've been featured on YouTube, I refuse to read the comments because they're so juvenile and asinine that it doesn't, it's not a healthy community to me at all. Different communities form around different social networks, and sometimes it's difficult to know what if any etiquette is expected to be followed when interacting with each community. There's like, I mean, there's like 10 different groups of people on Facebook. There's the self-promoters that shamelessly put things like, oh, just got a promotion, just finished big project work, can't wait to go on my trip next weekend. Then there's the Debbie Downer type It's always like, Has a negative oh, story. yeah, my feet hurt, I hate Mondays. Um, those people that are posting really personal things. Do you ever get those kind of messages? It's kind of weird when you have like a manager come to you on Facebook or something like that and be like, can you be my friend on Facebook? And I remember when I was working in HR briefly, they'd regularly chase, check Facebook and MySpace yeah. profiles for people that were applicants and you know, these 19 year old girls or guys have pictures of them beer bonging or smoking pot or something that Right away, they don't get the job. They don't even get their resume written because of some stupid picture or a comment or something that they put online for everyone to see. Found out that my boyfriend had a girlfriend. Um, my boyfriend and I saying had a girlfriend through a tag photo of him. So it's amazing the things you can find out on Facebook when you click on names and you can see everybody else's business and what they're doing on their page. So one of my friends had a recent a pregnancy scare and uh, she lived out of state from her mom and her mom uh, was not really new to Facebook, didn't really know how to do it and decided instead of sending a uh, message which would be private, she posted it to the wall which shares with mutual friends, do you know if you're pregnant or not, which is uh, you know a little uncomfortable for someone who doesn't want the world to know she's having a scare. And her boyfriend was the first one to see that post. The temptation is that in this world everyone wants to share. I quit Facebook because I found it annoying and invasive. It seems everyone has an opinion on or of Facebook and social networking sites in general, but there's no denying most people are reliant on them in some fashion. In the pursuit of understanding, I felt it necessary to hear what the social networking sites had to say for themselves. So what do you personally use Facebook for? Um. Well, uh, there's sort of the two uses. There's uh, my personal use and my professional use, and uh, I think like uh, a lot of people, I use Facebook to keep up with friends near and far, old and new, um, what they're up to, share what I'm up to. Um, but then, you know, since I work at Facebook, um, I also have a, and you know, part of my job is promoting the brand and protecting the reputation of the company. Um, you know, I, I really think it's become you know, the communication platform. I can see it, you know, supplanting the phone, text messaging, you know, other other sort of, other you know, other than the, the um, nothing else will replace, you know, personal interaction. And I, I think, you know, Facebook as a company is hopeful that uh, Facebook will be not only a communication platform but an identity platform and that on the web as you navigate the web, you will be represented as your Facebook identity. The, the, I think privacy and the and the fact that, that even the word has become you know associated with the issue is, is a little bit of a misnomer. I mean, the idea of privacy and private literally means restricting access, right? You know, so like I I close my blinds so that I can be private. You know, I don't join Facebook so I can be private. Advertisers can't target those users any differently. In the way, because the way Facebook does it is, they take the attributes of your profile and then anonymously target them for advertisers without telling the advertiser who those are. <laughs> you know, and there 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 are some some versions of that that are that are really creepy. You know, you know, you wouldn't want someone you didn't know following you everywhere you went, marking what buildings you went into and what time you were there and what time you left. People get value from the web service knowing where they are. Personally, I'd rather see relevant ads than, you know, tax ads.
I don't think we found the answers, but I think it's important to ask the question. Is there anything that people always ask you?